Hi guys, Future Thomas here. I've edited the video and realized I didn't actually provide any information about where this behavior strategy comes from. The behavior strategy comes from a conversation that I had with my deputy head about behavior. I wanted to try something a little bit different and experiment a little bit. There's a book called When the Adult Changes, Everything Changes by Paul Dix over at Pivotal Education. And it's worth checking some of his stuff out because it's quite useful for teachers around the world. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a bit of an experimental video, but it's a little bit different to what I usually do. Shut it over a number of days. So we'll jump straight into it. See you in a sec. Hey guys, I'm Thomas Bakemore. I teach, travel, and sometimes triumph. And this is a teach video. Now, it's the last half term at school, and I don't know why, but for some reason, I find myself being a bit of a Naggy Nigel, if you're a parent or teacher, you'll know what I mean. Like, it's the type of teacher that is consistently saying things like, ah, oh, sit down, show me that you're listening. I think it's got something to do with my slightly inconsistent behavior policy that I'm sort of carrying out at the moment. By behavior policy, I mean this thing that's on the wall down here. Now, that is something that some of you might see in other schools. It's a type of behavior ladder. So if a child is doing well, they'll go up the ladder. And if a child is not doing so well, they'll go down. However, that for me is somewhat tokenistic. I was finding towards the second term, I had children saying things like, oh, Mr. Blakemore, I've done this piece of work. Do you think I've done it well? I'd be like, yeah, buzzing, really good, fantastic. And the question was then, can I move my name up? I said, yes. But then I was also thinking, well, you've just sort of completed a piece of work that you should be doing anyway. That's sort of like an expectation. Surely the reward should be for doing something exceptional. And I was sort of just baffled. I had one of those moments where I sort of thought, is this, is this right? Should I be rewarding things that should just be happening anyway? Like if I was at work and I taught a lesson, do I get to have some sort of reward at work? No. So why do the children immediately get rewards for completing something, a piece of work? I'm hoping that I can start to develop or create a different way of managing the behavior in my class. So I wanna try and develop a new behavior management strategy in my class. I'm gonna try, as always, to try and keep it as consistent as possible, but it's based around the notion of class rewards. So I've got this board up here at the moment. It's a learner profile board. That means that basically any children that do well within a certain element, so we've got things like resilience, open-minded, you'll see my stuff on another video up here. There's like a classroom tour that explains it. I'm gonna take that display down, but I'm gonna use that display space. You'll see on the outside that there's a range of different suites. I'm gonna keep them up and I'm gonna go along the lines of what was it? Sweet behaviour. Don't note to self, never use sellotape on a display board because you start to rip it. I'm going to have to back that again. Another tip though is always try and save this stuff, especially if it's already cut out to the border of your backing. It just saves a bit of time. So that's that done. I'm gonna have to try and back that again. So you know that for the last couple of days, Mr. Blakemore has been a little bit poor at making sure that people are moving up their names when they're doing things well. So we have changed our display, and you can see that we've got our new display for sweet behaviour. Now that means that we all have to work as a team, okay? And it's something that we're okay at, but definitely need to improve. So that means that we are all responsible for some key things. Now, there are some things that we need to do. We are kind to others in school. So if I'm seeing people uh, working nicely together and picking up things for other people, making sure that they're tidying up after one another, then that's how you will earn points for that. The other one is we listen to the teacher and adults. So that's to do with on the carpet, making sure that you're focused. If I say, uh, stop, look and listen, making sure we do that straight away. If you're able to do that really quickly, then that's an easy one to earn points on. We always give our best effort. That one is for really being, being brave and ambitious, being trying to make sure that we're completing all of our work and really trying hard. And the last one of our four is respecting the classroom. That comes towards our box inspections. 
Now, you know how much Mr. Blakemore is going a little bit crazy at the moment for things like glue sticks, and the lids being off, and pens, and the lids being off, and drying up, and need to be thrown away. So, that one is something that, fingers crossed, we can develop. It's all about working as a team, as part of this new challenge. Questions? Yes, Pedro? Uh, is it just you that move up, or the whole class? It's the whole class. We're all the whole class. Not about you, Pedro. Okay, it's not about you writing your names on there. If I say, right, Pedro, you've worked really hard at making sure that that table is perfect. So that you've done that, basically. So I say, right, Pedro, you and your table, you've earned the whole class a point. So you are part, not just you, you are part of a bigger team. We are all a class and it's about working. That key word is teamwork. And we know that teamwork... Teamwork is the best teamwork. You do remember. So. So it's the end of the week, and I'd say it's the first week I've properly introduced the behaviour board. Throughout the week I've been sort of saying to them, oh well done guys, you've hit this category, so we earn a point. I've introduced having a specific individual who's responsible for ticking off the boards. However, I'm finding that they're a little bit selfish with it. They haven't achieved the, the goals that I set for the start of the week, and that's because certain individuals were just sort of letting their team down. Now, I had children continuously saying to other people, like, guys, we're a team, we need to work together. Like, and that was great, but they're just still not quite reaching it. So I think what I'm gonna start to do is introduce MVPs, most valuable people, to each specific category. So if there's someone who's showing a really good characteristic or something well towards that specific board, then I'll say, right, this person is doing this really well, and then hopefully raise the profile of these boards so that people say, like, oh, this guy, what's he doing? Uh, having those role models for each attribute that I, I sort of put up there. So I'll see what goes next week, and then I'll report back to you guys. So it's the end of the final week trying this behavior strategy within my class. Now, I'm gonna continue it until the end of the year. However, I just wanna round this video up. This week, what I've done is put MVP children on. And what that means is if children are always demonstrating characteristics towards a specific attribute, such as listening to the teacher and adults, it's those children that always demonstrate those characteristics that get to go on the board. I'm not looking for children who can sit still and listen for five minutes. They've got to consistently show me that they are working towards that attribute to get their names on that board. Now, it seems a bit pointless, but at the end of the week, my school have this Hot Chocolate Thursday where we pick always children. And it's those children that always demonstrate good and positive behaviors. So out of the children that are written down on there, I get to choose one of those so the children know that they're trying to work to become an MVP of that specific attribute. You'll notice as well that there are more tallies. Now, that's because I've raised the profile of that behavior chart. I've, I've started to think a little bit more about using that because it's, it's been new. So, children are now starting to work a lot more as a team. I really like that specific element. Lots of little minor interruptions have now started to fade away because they're starting to sort of prompt each other to behave and think about their listening to the teacher. You've got things like glue lids and things like that that are no longer going missing so much, they always do anyway, but they're, they're not going missing as much. And as a result, it's making my life a little bit easier as a teacher just simply because they're prompting each other to behave and think about their attitudes rather than me consistently saying, come on, you need to do X, Y, Z, you need to move your name up, down. It's, it's making my life a little bit easier. I'm gonna summarize this video up in a little bit. I'm gonna wait until the end of the day. And then at the end of the day, then I'll talk about what I think this behavior management strategy and whether or not I'm gonna use it next year with my new class. Not gonna lie to you guys, I forgot to film the end of yesterday. So I've come in on one of my days after to just finish this up and finish a few bits around the classroom. So what do I think of the behavior management strategy that I have trialed in my classroom? It's definitely something that has counteracted lots of low level behavior situations and it's also helped try and get the children a little bit more motivated to respect the classroom. So I'm definitely gonna be trying this in the future next year. Now next year, I think I'm gonna try things a little bit different with this display. Now I'm gonna try and get the children to aim to get the same sort of 10, I might change, 
in each specific category. I'm still definitely gonna keep the MVPs because I think that's a really valuable system. However, I'm gonna try and reduce the reward side of things because at the moment children are trying to get the 10 for five minutes in each section golden time. So that's 20 minutes altogether. But I know that that's not meant to be what it's about. It's not meant to be about gaining reward. It's meant to be about the children demonstrating consistent behavior and all working together and being happy for one another in achieving that 10 um, together. It's meant to be that sort of team process. So that's sort of a way I do things a little bit differently next year. As for my own thoughts on the behavior management system, I definitely like it because I can get a child to be a buddy so that they can be marking things off for me. So I've not got to be consistently thinking about moving people up and down myself. I'm also quite keen on the fact that it's visual so the children see immediately where they are. Only con I can potentially see with this behavior management strategy is collaboration through the school. My children at the moment, they go to specific specialists. So music, they go to Arabic. And I know that it's quite hard for those teachers to see which classes they're from. So for them to reward them, they would have to, I don't know, give them some sort of token maybe in the future, but I, I have to think about that one. Also for things like phonics where it's split classes, I have children from a different class, so I know that for them, they might be a bit like, well, what's the point in this behavior management system for me, themselves in my classroom? So I'd have to think about what I do for those specific children. So those are the things going forward. However, I thought I'd just share a completely different behavior management strategy. Now, if you're considering taking this strategy on board, I've got a range of tips that might help you develop this strategy in your classroom. Some of the tips are just general behavior management tips as well, which is always good. Tip number one, focus on the positive. Now, it's far too easy when you see negative behavior to just immediately pick up on that negative behavior, speaking to that individual. However, remember when you see negative behavior, that is between you and the individual. So that brings me on to tip number two, negative behavior for this display needs to be dealt with between you and the individual. It's not for you to say, which was my mistake at the start, it's not for you to say, right, you've done this wrong, so you need to rub one off on the board because you've impacted the whole team. It's simply between you and the person next to you. Takes me on to number three, try not to remove rewards once you've rewarded them. I sometimes get into this mistake and I started by making this mistake with this display. If you've given someone a reward, that reward is there, that point is there for good. Don't start rubbing them off because it's really demoralizing and demotivating for that team because I know that children would have been part of that process and if one person's actions or two persons, two, two pe 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 persons, people's actions impact on that display, then it's unfair on the rest of them. Tip number four, think about the attitude rather than the action. So rather than say, right, we're looking for hands up and you're gonna put notches on for every time someone has a hand up. Think about maybe we listen to the teacher and other adults because that way you can have that open dialogue of what it's like to need to listen to the teacher on a regular basis and then you can start to implement those regular attitudes and talk about those learning habits, if you like. Tip number five, get parents involved. Now, children are always fascinated when the parents are aware of the behavior management strategies that are happening in school. Open up the dialogue about what the display means and get the parents asking questions like, oh, how many points have you got in this specific category? That way the children know that the parents are interested in their behavior in school and they're more likely to try and promote that behavior within the classroom. My next and final tip is to just Try it. Now, there's nothing wrong with trying a new behavior management strategy. For the last five years, I've been using the whole move up, move down system, and it's worked really well. However, it's always refreshing in teaching to try something a little bit different and take a risk if you like. I'm always fascinated to hear new behavior management strategies that you guys use within the classroom. If there's any other questions that you want to ask about this behavior management strategy, then feel free to use the comments that are down below to ask questions. This has been a great this has been a great teaching video and it's something that I want to be doing more of in the future. If you've enjoyed my videos, feel free to smash the like button. That helps with the YouTube algorithms. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. Down in the corner, I make a range of teaching and traveling videos that you can check out on my channel, guys. I'll see you in the next one and I'm out.